So you don't necessarily, you don't need a healer. It's just sometimes, pe uh, sometimes people are surprised at how more effect, you know, how effective healing is. I, I, I don't pretend to understand it, but you don't have to have a healer. Uh, but yes, there are many talking characters. So Nick, I'm guessing you're going to want to play a fox. Um, you don't have to. I don't, I don't necessarily care, but I mean, I guess. If you don't care, then you're going to play a red fox, because we like to get started today. Perfect. Okay. Um, and you like to talk to people. Well, do you like to talk to people because you are a character who has status, like wealth or money, and people have to talk to you? Or do you prefer to be a sort of con artist, socializer that way? Uh, yeah, that's usually the type one. I'm a little bit of bardic influence, like from D&D. Okay. All right, that helps us narrow it down. So you want to play some sort of character who does have status. Because Iron Claw has been compared to Game of Thrones, and I'm flattered by that. Because ha coming from a noble line, if your character has the gift of nobility, you are better than other people. This entire idea of uh, all this, you know, we have the same rights for the same people, that's not true in a medieval setting. <laughs> Nobles have high justice, commoners have low justice. And if you are a noble, not only are you, allow, you know, exempt from the laws that govern the low classes, but you can actually meet out certain kinds of justice on people who are your lessers. It's <laughs> social, I mean, yeah. This is not a socially flat game. Uh, so, did you want to be a noble, or do you want to be a commoner? Oh, <laughs> I'd love to be a noble. That sounds wonderful. Okay, well, there's two basic kinds of nobles, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you play the dilettante, which is the talky noble. Hey. <clears throat> the, dil us. the dilettante is described on page 34 of the book. Uh, it is in the first Not column, happened. second entry, dilettante, a ne'er-do-well who avoids work by spending the family fortune. He doesn't have the book. Um, well, uh, do you have your character sheet handy? Character sheet? Um, I'm a uh... notepad. <laughs> Let's say I'm okay. putting a notepad to you together right now. Have you played a tabletop game? See, usually have... when you play a tabletop game, people have a sheet that they write down yeah, well, their abilities on. Here, here's the thing is normally like we get our sheets through roll 20 and I had not been advised otherwise. So uh, I it, assumed that that I, was the natural order of thing. Uh, uh, is there a sheet on roll 20? I don't uh, think you guys have yet. provided iron claw content for roll 20, so no. No, I thought I thought somebody may I, I, no, you, can, you said I, you didn't want to use it, remember? Uh I I'm not uh, Mm. Um. Uh, we uh, okay. To, to to clarify my, I don't mind. You know, whoever made the roll twenty sheet, thank you for making that. My my big issue with the roll twenty sheet is I don't like it when people use the automated tools that are built into them, because sometimes people push buttons wrong or something's wrong with their browser and we get incorrect numbers. There are some streams I've had in the past where people are pushing buttons in their characters. I rolled a fourteen to hit. I'm going um. We only rolled D12, so I'm not sure you got a number that large. I pushed buttons on the sheet, and this happened! And it's like, um... Hmm... So, your place knowing the game. Yeah, so... It's a traditional tabletop game, so I, um... Yeah, um, Nick... Uh, is it gonna be a problem if you, like, you, you know, write a sheet or get a, uh, get a word processor <laughs> like Google Docs out and... I can... I can happily just do it through Google Docs. It is no problem. Put everything in your fucking notepad. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah. We used to do everything through Google Docs anyway. All right. Perfect. Roger that. Um, plus, um, all right. Plus, if we have time, maybe we'll put in links to for people to get copies of Iron Claw at a discount today. Yay. Um, all right. So uh, on page 20 of the book is the Red Fox. You could also be a gray fox. I believe red fox is your personal choice, right? Um, I mean, I I had honestly wanted to be a silver one if that was an option. Silver cause... fox is an option. You are a silver yes. fox. Perfect. Congratulations. Well, is it, what book is that? Oh, that's on page 20. 
Uh, but basically, um, he's a noble, so he's a silver fox. The commoners are the gray foxes. See how that works? Ha ha! Ho ho! <laughs> okay, so as a silver fox, you get three skills, which are, um, are you ready? Okay, give me a brief moment. I actually opened up a document instead of a Word doc. Or instead of the An important uh, sheet. nuance. Yes, gray foxes are creatures of aristocracy at birth. The, in fact, the entire Rinaldi noble line in the Iron Claw lore uh, is a line of silver foxes. Perfect. So you might actually be of the extended Rinaldi line. Which means you might actually be like 800 or like 20th in line for the throne. So don't die because the I can't got when all these got <laughs> Whatever you do, don't die. <laughs> Good advice, really. See, welcome to the Iron Claw stream where you give practical advice. The okay, are you... Not dying. Not dying. Uh, that, that's How do you spell the, uh, the Rinaldi line? Uh, R-I mm -hmm. and A... N A L D I. Okay. Oh, okay. sure. well, that sounds. So you are probably an illegitimate bastard or something like that. Um, all right. So are you ready for me to tell you the abilities you get for being a silver fox? Mm -hmm. Okay. You get three skills. The skills are climbing, jumping, and stealth. <laughs> So when you assign your silver fox trait, you will uh, if you assign a D4, or D6, or D8, you'll get that bonus in climbing, jumping, and stealth. You could make choose to make this your dump stat and have a D4 and be a crappy fox, or you could put a 12, you know, something bigger in it, uh, and uh, you know, rock the house. It's your call. Uh, then there is gifts. You get three line item gifts. These are like feats or talents in other games you get for being a silver fox. Are you ready for me to tell you your gifts? Okay. Okay, your first gift is Danger Sense. You have the uncanny ability to sense danger, and this will give you an initiative bonus. Yay! Uh, you have keen ears. You can hear sounds other creatures who don't have keen ears cannot hear at all. And the last mm -hmm. one is you have the night vision. You have the ability to see in the dark. Okay. There are other special abilities you get for being a fox. In the interest of brevity, we omit them here. Okay, now I'm ready to tell you what you get for your career, because your career is the dilettante. Mm -hmm. As a dilettante, you get three skills. The first skill is... Gossip, the ability to talk with people and get useful information. Anyone here can get useless information. That's free. Uh, you what also get this the name of that one again. Gossip, G O S S I P. It's basically the gather information from three point five. Okay. Related to this is another skill called inquiry. I N Q U I R Y. This is the ability to not only ask questions, but to figure out when people are bullshitting you. Uh, we can say bullshit, right? Yeah, it's not a PG stream. All right, fuck you, people. Then, um, can we yes. Be, wait, can we be specious because this is Iron Claw? Ha <laughs> ha! It is to is laugh. It? Only if you give me some specie. That's a fancy word for money. Um, ha <laughs> ha! Get the dad jokes out of the way. Um, so inquiry, so as I emphasize with people, inquiry is the ability to ask people the, cor you know, the correct questions and figure out when they're lying to you. More on that when people are actually lying to you in the game. The last skill you get for being a dilettante is negotiation, the ability to get people to do things for you. One thing I'm fond of pointing out is there's no persuasion skill in the game, but there is a negotiation skill. So if you want people to do things, you can negotiate. Okay. Uh, at as a noble, you get three things. Are you ready for the three things? Give me a brief second. Yes, there are three gifts. These are lion talents that you get for being a dilettante. Oh, that comes from me being a, a dilettante, not right. necessarily from my noble class. From my uh, status, I mean. Dilettante, dilettante is, is your... your class, the, the way we set the game up, 
uh, mm -hmm. is originally we had uh, a line item game like Fate Core where people were allowed to buy whatever they wanted. But okay. the problem with letting people buy whatever they want is they'll build nonsensical characters. Like, they'll mm -hmm. have people who say, I'm a noble, but you actually don't have any noble skills or anything. So in Iron Call of Second Edition, we repackaged it. So there are is a uh, species and career. And not only do you get a trait that tells you how good you are with them, but you get a package deal where you get certain talents to come with it. So your character is a dilettante, which is one of the noble careers. And since you okay. pick dilettante, it automatically comes with the gift of nobility. So therefore, you are a noble, and you actually have a gift, and it's called nobility. Oh, so it's just another gift that I received from this. Right. Okay. So they all use the same rules. They all use the same gift rules. It's just, basically, these are packages. There is an oh. option in the back of the book where you just make up whatever you want, if you guys just want to make up whatever you want, and you put the game, and you can do whatever you want. But, um... We have it set up this way, so when someone says you're a dilettante, no one is surprised that you're a noble. Did you write down that you have the gift of nobility? Uh-huh. All right, you get another gift. It's called literacy. You can read. <sighs> um, does anybody here not have the gift of literacy? I know what damn darn darn word to do. Right. If you do not have the gift of literacy, you cannot read. This will be hilarious. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the Middle Ages. The last gift you get for being a dilettante is a trappings gift. It's called Dilettante's Trappings. This is a gift that says you start the game with cool stuff, and if you lose your cool stuff, you can replace your cool stuff. That is the short version of this gift. Okay. Uh, there is a huge section of the book that describes all the different rules of, you know, hey, does that mean if I can just, you know, just sell my pistols over and over again? No. No, you can't. <laughs> um, okay, you start the game with a pistol. Congratulations. Perfect. You also start the game with a rapier, uh, which is a long fencing sword. You don't actually know how to fight with this because we didn't give you any melee combat skill. It is what is called a status symbol. The pistol is also a status symbol. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations, you can't I'm fight. sure waving it around will get some respect with an intimidation roll or something. Yeah, yes. but I can but and, I can read at least. So I, mean, you. <laughs> I heard uh, I heard girls love guns. Alright. Also you start well, I heard that when you brandish a gun in front of a peasant, they back down and remember their place. As a dilettante, you also have leather armor. Mm hmm You know, just in case. Uh, traditionally you also have a dagger, a hat, and a cape. And most importantly, you get a signet ring. That's S-I-G-N-E-T. You guys know what a signet mm -hmm. ring is? I know how to spell. Okay, but you guys know what that is, right? Yeah, I do. It's a All ring right. showing your status. Right. Sometimes people will ask to see this. You can also use it to stamp documents to say it's actually you. The signet ring is the big deal. It's like you flash your ring at people and they, they know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can start the game with more stuff than this. You could, as long as it's like average cost or less, you can have more stuff. This is just, uh, you start you start the game with a rapier and a pistol, it's fancy gear. We can worry about the stats when you actually start to murder people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is where we um, do your three elective gifts, because you are allowed to go through the book and pick three uh, electives, but uh, you don't actually have a copy of the book. Nope. And you said you basically just wanted to walk around and talk to people. Uh, More or less. So, so uh, and I'm guessing you don't actually... So, are you a... If a fight breaks out, are you a support person, a coward person, uh, or a uh, DPS type of fighting person? Um, well, I can't really fight. We can and make you uh, well. We're getting the elective phase. We can make you fight. Okay. Well, uh, I will usually either fight or attempt to support. I don't enjoy running from fights. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start you off with the following three elective gifts because you could go through the book. There's dozens of them, but in the interest of brevity, the first one I'm going to start you with is a gift called um, Resolve. Mm-hmm. 
The Gift of Resolve allows you to include your Will Die as an extra Soak Die, which means you can suck up damage a little bit better. Uh, this can greatly uh, uh, increase your ability. In fact, many of you started with this gift, right? Uh, so which gift? Resolve. Can you repeat the first part of that again? No. Uh, it lets you use your Will Die as a Soak Die. Somebody's got a call. Finally. Okay. The next gift I'm going to recommend for you is called Luck. L-U-C-K. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to re-roll a die two more times if you don't like it. It is one of those tapped gifts. You tap it, pick a die, roll it two more times. It's one of my favorite gifts because it's easy to understand. Uh, you can use it once a chapter, so basically once uh, a story or adventure. Uh, so use it to bail your ass out. And the last one I'm going to recommend is Increased Trait. You can buy up one of your traits. You have to specify which one, so I'm going to say Increased Trait, colon, Career. And we're going to buy up your um, starting career die. Go you. So, Nick, has anyone talked you through character creation at all, or are you coming into this completely cold? Uh, pretty much entirely blind. I heard pretty like much a, completely cold. Uh, I've heard like a bare amount of it, like back forever ago when you guys were, like, I guess, organizing this little thing, and you guys were looking, and people in here were looking through the book. All right, I, I apologize, folks. We did this a little bit out of order because it's usually in order that we do this in. Okay, there are six traits in the game. Traits mm -hmm. represent your ability to do stuff in the game. Uh, there's body, which is how physically strong you are and how resistant you are to physical harm. Mm -hmm. Speed, which is how fast you are and how nimble you are with your fingers, because RPGs. Mind, which is how smart you are, uh, how quick you are in the uptake and how much book learning you have. And will, which is your force of personality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the four basic traits. Everyone has those. Everyone you meet is a body, a speed, a mind, and a will. There are two traits that are unique to you. You have a species of silver fox, and you have a career of dilettantes. While many people you meet will have a species trait and a career trait, they won't be silver foxes or dilettantes. Sound cool so far? Okay. Excellent. Uh, you start the game with, uh, and I'll go ahead and put this in the chat here. You start the game with two good stats. They each have a rating of eight. You'll start the game with three average stats. They have a rating of six. And you'll start the game with one dump stat, which has a rating of four. So of the six stats, body, speed, mind, will, species, and career, you must now rank them. You must put eights in the two that you care about and a four in whatever your dump stat is. Okay. So two that were particularly strong? Yes. Three that were okay. And then yeah, the I, one I, that I, I kind of sucks. That, are you following the Discord chat? Um, I don't have it open right at this moment, and I don't have it. For, but yes. Okay. Don't have it open, but you're still talking to us on it. Miracles never see. Here, I'll pop it over to roll twenty real quick then. Okay. I mean, do you do you folks want me to use the roll twenty chat, or do you want me to use the Discord chat? I should have mm -hmm. asked to that. I usually pop between both, but I guess some people only have roll 20 up. Well, I guess we're going to use the roll 20 because that's where the die rolling is. That makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go ahead and pick those. Now, so now um, we're, we're, we're streaming, right, Theta? Yes. The stats you choose right now will affect your entire gaming experience! If you screw this up, you will ruin the game not just for you, but for everyone else! That was a little aggressive. Well, actually, oh, yeah, I'm I'm for some of the failure. Everyone's upset. Mm. Yes, you'll be feeding the other team. You don't want to be that. No, no, I'm, seriously, it doesn't. Pick whatever makes the most sense to you. If you're having trouble picking, you can't go wrong by putting an eight in your career. It's what you do a lot. It's what you give a care about. Off you go. Uh, if you're planning on talking to people a lot, you use will if you're planning on bossing people around a lot because that's your personality. And you use mind if you're planning on actually reasoning with people or looking for clues. Those are two good things to start with. Hmm. In you terms of... Oh, go ahead. 
You said that increased trait allows you to buy up another stat upper rank. So, yes, we're, go where we're going to assign the ratings first and then apply that last. That's not the power gamer way to do it. That's the order we're going to do it because it's the easiest. Uh, as, a, as a question of mechanics, could I, could I put you know, that on top of a thing that's already an 8 and make it a 10? Is that a thing? That is absolutely correct. Okay. There's, in fact, one character in the book who did it twice and started with a 12. And that's in the book. Uh, sometimes a lot of people come into this with a build that's nothing but increased traits because bigger dice are better. All right, have you assigned your stats, Nick? Um, give me a brief moment. Uh, hmm. Just for the purposes of clarification, can I take increased trait on the same thing twice at the beginning? Yep, you can go all up to 12. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a sample character in the book that does exactly that. All right, but my, again, for the purposes of just having it figured out, uh, as a cheetah, I have increased trait speed. Yeah! So if I put my D8 into that, my speed goes up by 10, or my speed goes up to a 10. That's right! And then and I do two increased traits, and then it goes up to a 12, so it's a D12 and a D4 starting out. Uh, it caps out at D12. Uh, okay. Once it reaches D12, stop increasing it. Skills are the only one that goes over. Skills roll over, traits do not. Okay. Um, uh, in Iron Claw 1st Edition, traits rolled over. In Iron Claw 2nd Edition, they don't. And, and it was because they get problematic. Is the word I will use. Alright, how are we doing, Nick? Um... I'm just wondering, what does mine do? You, uh, what is mine useful for again? Ah, has not a day gone by that people do not ask what is mine useful for? The philosophers would debate this for generations, but basically, um, it's thinky stuff. Like I said, it's observation, <laughs> negotiation, reasoning, learning, book learning, observation, street smarts, uh, all that kind of stuff. You said observation twice, by the way. Uh, see? That's your mind at work. It's also really good for magic stuff. Some of it's occasionally. Some magic is powered by mind. People right. were surprised when they said, wait, wait a minute, religion is powered by will instead of mind? And it's like, yes, yeah. religion is powered by your emotions and your will and not your mind and reasoning. Welcome to Iron Claw's social commentary. Side comment is, of mine is, I'm more surprised magic is enrolled by supernatural. Uh, it is if you're a thaumaturge. Yep. I'm not an elementalist. Uh, well, that's why thaumaturge is, well, I mean, Theta is really fond of the lore, where there's the ultimate thaumaturge who is disgusted by elementalists and think you're all posers. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Kendranagar the Shadow Mage, where it's like, ah, oh, manipulate, magic's not for manipulating the base elements, magic is for the metatextualness of entire reality. I'm gonna go oh, right I'm the magic biggest poser, I'm playing both sides of the fence. Right, so, <laughs> so there you go. Well, uh, Kendranagar's yeah, the part of the lore is elementalism is the introduction to true magic. And so this entire idea of the Dunwasser College and these guys devoting their entire lives to elementalism um, <coughs> is, is the deal. That's part of the lore. But yeah, so uh, different ones. In fact, part of it is water magic's ruled by swimming and, you know, air magic's ruled by weather sense. So birds are good at air spells and otters are good at water spells. Who knew? Um crazy how are you and nick got your stats assigned uh yeah i've got them all put in all right so we know your species and your career we can go on to step four you get to choose a personality if you will look in uh the lower left of the character sheet which apparently you don't have uh one mm -hmm. of the gifts that you have is called personality which mm -hmm. is uh where you get a bonus to a role once per day you must now pick a personality if you don't have a personality um sadly not everybody does or can't think of one, we can assign one to you randomly. Uh, all you have to do is to put a word in that describes your character's personality. Naive, lustful, kind, gregarious, gluttonous, jealous, abstinent, bold. Um, anything you want. <laughs> 
I mean, you're a noble, so pretentious. Just enough inbreeding to be defensive. Personality um, ruff rustled my Jimmy's meme. <laughs> yeah, so I, if you want, if you want to base your character off of a dank meme, uh, that now's the time. Our, yes, our game will finally be on fleek. I have, I have nothing offhand. Okay. Uh, well, it's time to roll a random die, and I will assign one to you randomly, as I am that kind of GM. Perfect. Thank you. Ha-ha! Your personality is humble. You can get a bonus on any roll that makes you humble. Mm. We're very loosey-goosey about this. Um, you know, the purpose of the personality is if you fail a roll and you think you should make it, you can tap your personality and roll an extra d12. And uh, that can often turn a failure into a success. Someone has um, and it also gives us a handle on your character. Okay. Now, also, every character must have a catchphrase, which we like to call a motto. This is your character's purpose for living, such as deeds, not words, or no, no fear and serve with joy, or no one is above the law. It is a motto or catchphrase. And once again, if you want to use one of those dank memes that are so fat and funky fresh, you can go ahead and do that too. Uh, if you cannot think of a motto, we can assign one to you. Mm. You are allowed to change this later. Yeah. Is it possible that I can just uh, fill this in later sometime? Well, the problem is you're going to fill it in right now because the experience points in the game are awarded by having a motto. So you can leave it blank, but you will earn less experience points. Um, could I have filled it in maybe later on when I actually think of a one that doesn't suck? Uh, it, it, we're not going to judge the... This is a tabletop role-playing game. No one is going mm -hmm. to judge the quality of your role-playing. Yes, but I'm going to judge it, and that's all that matters. Well, you need you need to start with a motto. Um, what if your motto is, uh, I have no motto? Um, you can technically put in that your motto is, I have no motto. The purpose of the motto is so, I am the game host, and I will be hosting the game. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I want to know, when you come to play this game... What is your goal? Is your goal to, um, you know, find the you know missing half of this locket? Is your goal that you want to be, you know, charismatic and have other people do what you say? Is your goal that you have a quick blade? You want other, you know, or your, sorry, your motto, you, you have a quick blade. You want other people to fall before you. Do you want to talk to a lot of people and have them respect you for your uh, wit and reason uh, and serenity? Why do you play a tabletop role playing game? Why are you here? I mean, tell me. Um, I mean, if it's pretty necessary, I suppose we can just roll one and then see what comes of it. Okay. I mean, th this is designed to get you into character, so mm. it's one of the few things we're saying. And you can always change it later. And also, if I roll one randomly and you don't like it, we don't have to keep it. You can always pick a different one. Haha! Mm. <laughs> one of my favorite mottos. Knowledge is belief. Belief is power. So you can write that down. If you don't like it, you can change it. <laughs> um, if you guys want to write phrases like winter is coming, we won't stop you. Um, we'll just give you funny looks, that's all. Wow. Well, based, based mine on constantly trying to stealth and use speed right. bullshit people's sight. Right. Because you do not earn experience points in this game by killing monsters and getting treasure. You earn experience points in this game by accomplishing goals and living up to your motto. Speaking of goals, you get to start the game with a goal. Uh, every uh, There is a quest list on the character sheet that lists the quests that you're currently on. Every time you accomplish a quest, you get experience points. But in a rare move, you get to define your own quest. Uh, did World of Warcraft have build your own quest for a while? What was the MMO that had build your own quest for a while? Neverwinter. Yeah, and people were complaining that uh, people would just make the the Neverwinter or the D&D Online dungeons were just really easy and gave people free stuff. Was that a complaint? Uh, yes, and also they did it anyway. Right. Well, congratulations. You get what I like to call the gimme goal, which is you get to write down a goal on your character sheet 
your very first quest goal. This is the only one you get to pick. You can make it as simple or as difficult. For example, Theta likes to be difficult. Theta, what's your goal? CK. Win a fight. Stop. What? Yeah, stop hopping popcorn, Nick. I'm sorry. I'm trying to move a thing, and it's not quiet. Pardon me. Okay. Did, did anyone tell them about the mute button? Okay. Um, so, um, all right, win a fight. Sorry. Well, <laughs> that's hilarious. Data has picked something easy today. Yes, his goal is to win a fight. That was easy. Some sample goals that we have listed are, you know, win a fight, leave town, get paid, go on a real adventure. You could be more complicated if you want, such as find the other half of this locket. Uh, give Dirty Frank the bullet he so richly deserves. <laughs> um, you know, uh, wash my sword in the four coasts of Calabria. Become the master uh, of your own career. I want to prove my legitimacy as an heir to the Rinaldi line. Okay, go ahead and put that down as your goal. <clears throat> prove your legitimacy to the Rinaldi line and put that down as a goal. Uh, the harder the goal is, the more points you get for it based on what the game host thinks. But... We also have the Gimme Goal, and since we're streaming, I'll remind everybody that one of the purposes of the Gimme Goal is if you've never played the game before, uh, the Gimme Goal can give you a free gift that um, you were missing in character creation because you didn't know what you were doing. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. hey, um, the Racked Bot link was deleted in the chat. Oh, that's my bot. Yeah, so bots can't post links. Is that right? It might not have a moderator. So it, yeah. Okay. It might not well, no be worries, that from that little I don't edit. No, who's in the chat. But yeah, we're dropping discount, mad discounts in the chats. And for those of you listening to this in the YouTube later, ha ha, you weren't in the chat. But yeah, we're dropping mad discounts to Iron Claw books in the chat. Hell yeah. So yeah. there it is. There it is. Awesome. And we can put this later in the YouTube run. But yeah, we have some discounted copies So uh, while they last. So thanks, Data, for setting that up. Okay. Um, once you've gone ahead and chosen your starting goal mm -hmm. and your starting motto, which we have done, uh, you get to start... Uh, since this is in the, the list here, you also have local knowledge of the City of Three Gates. So that's City of Three Gates. You uh -huh. can call that Triskelion, but Three Gates is a lot easier for people to spell. Um, if it matters, you also start the game with a language, which is Calabrese. Yeah, what are the languages? Like, what can we take? Well, is there a common? Uh, no. Because it's the Middle Ages! Ha ha ha! It is to laugh! Uh, there's no common language. What are you talking about? Uh, they're uh, Calabria, uh, Calabrese. The most frequently spoken language in Calabria is Calabrese, but they have languages such as Berlafine uh, in remote locations. Uh, in Zhongao, uh, the most language mandated by law is Zhongese. And here in Acoma, the we're going to be playing in the Delton Sultanate, where the most common, where there are the two common languages of the Delton Patois and the Anatolian Empire language, which I think is Anatolian until I, because I don't think it's Anatolianese, it's Anatolian or Anatolish probably, uh, because oh. the Delton Sultanate is currently a puppet of the Anatolian Empire. So those are languages. Languages will be an issue. They're something you can buy in the game. Uh, it's the Middle Ages. It's in height. And language barriers are very important. Um, in fact, because um, Theta, you're a veteran of this game. You've actually run into uh, Gravoyan uh, slavers, right? I don't think so. I mean, I think we ran into the cultists, not the slavers. You run in the cult support. Well, a common thing is uh, the from uh, far off Gravoria. Sometimes the slavers show up, and only the captain knows the local language. He hires mercenaries who don't know the local language because it makes them less likely to desert. They can't go anywhere or talk to anyone. So, oh they... right, in Zungao, yeah. Now I remember. Yeah, uh, it, this happened in multiple times in the yeah. 
in, in multiple sometimes yeah the Gregorian slave well the Gregorian slavers go anywhere but there's also different groups of that so yes language is an issue there is no common language this is um brought to you by iron claw so you'll start with calabrese uh you could actually pick a different local language but i'd like to get started today uh let's see um all right uh nick are you still with us yes i'm still here all right you get to go ahead and add 13 marks to skills um <sighs> You've never seen a character sheet, have you? Um, I've seen a character sheet, maybe not this one. Oh okay, yeah, did you? Um, yeah, because the Iron Claw character sheets can be downloaded from uh, uh, our website and from the Drive Through RPG website. There is a starter pack that's downloadable for free, and you can also see this in the preview. So, um, on the character sheet, it'll show you there's 26 skills in the game, and you can bind them up independently of each other. You can buy up any skill you want. But um, this is a lot easier if you can see the character sheet because you can see all the skills on it. So I'm guessing you still haven't downloaded a sheet, right, Nick? I don't know exactly where I'm supposed to be getting that. Uh, let oh, me. Uh, well, there's this great website called Drive Through RPG. We would like to thank for being one of our best partners. Uh, who supports a lot of our great books. In fact, we're dropping links to drive through RPG discounted links in the chat and in the summary. Do... So let me go ahead and drop this link here because we are old school tabletop. Um, I haven't seen the Roll20 sheet. I'm sure it's great. I have too many windows open. There we go. Bing! Uh, I don't think that actually works as a... Uh, just at the moment. But that's the Iron Claw preview where you can download and see a bunch of stuff. Uh, so Nick, to make this very quickly, you're going to go ahead and uh, get some skill marks. You've played D&D 3 before, so you know what a skill rank is, right? Um, I'm sorry, give me a moment. Like, things are exploding on my computer. Um, all right. Okay, there we go. Okay, yes. so you've, uh, yeah, you, you've seen skill marks before, right? In Pathfinder and D20 and that kind of jazz? Um, no, not really. I didn't play Pathfinder. Oh, what have you played? Closest I've played was 3.5. What other games have you played? Um, I've played 3.5, I've played 4th edition, I've played 5th edition, um, I've played a handful of Shadowrun this one time. Okay, um, so, you're pretty much, so you're pretty much new to tabletop games then. More or less, I guess. I just don't have a whole lot of, like, played variety. I've seen other games. Okay, but you know what a skill rank is, right? More or less, yes. All um, right, well, I'm um, going to have you write... I'm really tired. I just hopped out of bed, so if you wouldn't mind explaining it. All right, cool. Well, skill marks allow you to improve skills. The more marks you have, the more they go up. You can buy up any skill you want. To make this go a little faster, I'm going to tell you to buy the following marks in the following skills, which will make your things go a lot better. <laughs> Uh, you're going to go ahead and put three points in leadership. So you have leadership and three marks in it. Whoa. We, we call them marks in the game. So, so leader, leadership plus three if you want. Or leadership hash 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 is what we usually write. Is there like a drop off point where you start pumping so many points into skills it just becomes redundant? Yes. I like the easy questions. You, you know where that kind of point is? Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, once you get your first D12. Okay. Because skill, now, as we said before, traits don't wrap around, but skills do. So when you get five ranks and get the D12, that's great, because D12, awesome, I can roll 12s, I can roll as high as possible. Once you lap around to D6, you get a D4, which isn't bad, because it raises your average, but now you kind of have to get that up again to D12, D8. You have to get up to 8 or 9 before it gets there. Eventually, because of the way the game works, you roll dice and take the highest of the rolls. Uh, your first D12 is awesome. Your 2D12 is great. Your 3D12 is okay. Your 4D12 is starting to reach diminishing returns here. So more is better, but it starts to drop off. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that actually perfectly answers my question. Yeah. Uh, you that Oh, Can I get that uh, discounted uh, the discounted book link one more time? Because I was um, not in Twitch chat to receive it. Uh, I think it'll show up again, and Theta has the link. Um, if it's it doesn't in, show uh, up, it's, I... it's in um, Twitch. <clears throat> I got it. 
Ah, uh, hold on, I got it, and I'll even put it in the roll twenty. Wee! Mm. Ah, uh, now here's the fun question: like... What would you say is the minimum in a skill to be good? D four. That D4? was easy. Okay. Uh, so there's a rule in the game called botching, which is one of my favorite rules, and that is if you roll all ones. Uh, something horrible happens to you. Uh, people really love to uh, talk about their favorite botches in D&D. Where it's like, oh, I rolled a one and fell off his horse and failed himself. It was great. Um, so there's a rule in the game called botching. Well, when you make a roll in the game, you roll a basic trait, and then you roll your skill. And, and sometimes people ask me, what if I don't have the skill? Then you just roll your basic trait. So, for example, if you want to negotiate with the guards not to murder you, you could roll your mind in negotiation. If you don't have any negotiation, just roll your mind. And at some point, someone will say, well, Rafferty, doesn't, if I only have one die, like I only have a D6, doesn't that mean I have a one in six chance of screwing this up in the worst possible way? And I'll say, yes! Now, if you had had a D4, just a single D4, in negotiation here, you'd be rolling a d6 and a d4, and have reduced your odds of screwing up from 1 in 6 to 1 in 24, and made it, like, way, way smaller if you just had a single d4. Ah, uh, but that's massive failure. Casual failure is probably still more common, though. Um, it casual <laughs> Um, so, if you have a choice between <laughs> casual failure... Right, but also, like, when people are asking, like, is a d4 worth anything, the first d4 will protect you from casual failure. It mm -hmm. also allows you to invoke a rule called the favorite rule. And the favorite rule is you can, when using a skill, you can choose a specialty, such as negotiation, um, you know, using my nobility, or some of my personal favorites, stealth, specializing in sneaking up on people to murder them, Melee combat, specializing in from surprise, uh, and then endurance, specializing in running away from a fight. Um, I, just, I just realized that uh, having only one dice and swimming is pretty bad because the the massive failure on that is quite great. Well, no, you will combine swimming with another attribute. So if you roll body and swimming to swim, even having a mirror D4 has changed you from a 1 in 6 failure chance to a 1 in 24 failure chance. So having any dice at all in a skill, you know, drastically reduces your odds of catastrophic failure. Buying more will increase your odds of critical success, but, I mean, does, does this make sense to people that, you know, the first part of it is removing catastrophic failure, and then later you can get up to actually can make the rolls? Yeah. And that was uh, the point I actually want to know, actually succeeding on a regular basis. Uh, I've been this trying to figure that out. Basis, you have to roll a four or better. Mm -hmm. I guess what my question with the... So maybe my 2d4 swimming roll will not suffice. Uh, to roll a four or better on 2d4 uh, is... Is two independent one in four chances. Yeah, so you only basically have a 50-50 chance. So did you put a d4 in your species trait? Uh, I don't have swimming. I'm a bird. You're a bird. Well, so <laughs> so no one is surprised that an that a non duck has a fifty percent chance of floundering in the water. Oh yeah. Okay, but I might add, you have a fifty percent chance. If you didn't have any swimming at all, you would actually have a one in four chance of drowning. Mm. So you've gone from a you've gone from a fifty percent chance of floundering and a three percent chance of drowning. I mean, that's what you've got right now: fifty percent floundering. You know, 50% simple failure, 3% catastrophic failure. That's what you have right now. Before you had that D4, you had a 75% chance of floundering and a 25% chance of just drowning. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to so, make some probability tables here. Right. So, so you, so in other words, the first point is yes, the mark is worth it. Plus, also the favorite rule will come into play later, which allows you to get a bonus if you have at least one mark and a skill. So yes, it's not one mark is useless. In, in fact, many people will buy one mark. Which brings us back to Nick. Hey, Nick, still with us? Yes. All right, so you've got three marks in leadership, right? Because I told you mm -hmm. to. Okay, mm -hmm. you're also going to put three marks in gossip. I know you got it because of your career, but now you're getting even more of it, so you're even better at it. Hell yeah. Okay, you're going to put three marks in academics. Give me a quick moment. I lost my temp for a second. All right. I uh, can be patient. Okay, there you go. All right. So we've got leadership, gossip, and academics. So that's three, mm -hmm. three, three. You get 13 yep. of these. 
So yep. let's see. I'm um, going down the main. I'm going to recommend that you put three points in negotiation because three is the maximum you're allowed to have. So we're capping you at three in all. Of oh, okay. that's a little unfortunate. Uh, how many into, into negotiation? Um, actually, I've changed my mind. We're going to put one point in negotiation. So mm -hmm. don't roll all ones and screw everything up. Um, Hell yeah. All right. Still with me? Mm hmm. Okay. And the last three points I'm going to have you put in the skill called Dodge, which is the ability to avoid incoming damage. This That's is a bit of a power gamer build, but hey, uh, I don't want you to die and you want to live. Yeah. Sounds about, uh, sounds about right. All right. Uh, plan on doing as little dying as possible. Okay, so uh, that was the skill marks. That's only back. nine out of. That's only eleven out of thirteen. I thought we did three in leadership, three in academics, three in gossip, one three in negotiation, in and one in dodge. No, three in dodge. We're doing three in dodge. Oh, we're three do in dodge. Yeah, we're gonna cap it out. All right. Um, uh, which that should be three, 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 and one, which should be thirteen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see, because th that was step six. All uh, all the 12 steps are on page 12. Ha <laughs> ha! Handy how that came out that way. Um, and let's see, step seven, where did you three electives? Uh, step eight, we get to pick a name. So, Nick, do you have a name for your character, or do you need to assign one randomly? Um, I have one. All right, write that down. You can actually go ahead and put Rinaldi. You, you get a last name, because you actually have a family. So if you want to claim nobility, you can put Rinaldi down as your last name. Oh. Peasants will just be addressed as you there. Um, okay. Okay. That, Hello. That, that means I have a question. What should yes. I put as my surname as a cheetah? Because I am also nobility. Oh. Uh, well, um, you could make up a noble family. Are you from the Calabria line, from the Anatolian line, or from the Zhang Gao line? Which one is closest to the ocean? All three of them are coastal, because they're major trading countries. Shit. Um, but so you're a cheetah, but, but, yeah, but you're a cheetah, which is actually from the savannah in one of my favorite scenes in Zootopia. Go back, why don't you just go back to the jungle? I'm from the savannah! Um, yeah, uh, so go ahead, you can go ahead and make one up. If you're having trouble making one up, we can assign one to you. Uh, there are several, um... In the scheme of nobility, Calabria recognizes four great houses. The Silver Foxes of the Rinaldi, the Boars of the Dolero, the Wolves of the Bisclave, and the Horses of the Avertopois. They are considered the great houses because they are considered peers, with the Rinaldi being first among peers. Figure that out for yourself. <laughs> um, those houses recognize no other noble house as having more authority than that. They recognize the authority of other countries or noble lines and don't, you know, just murder them. But, you know, they're the Lannisters and Starks of their place. Underneath them are several minor houses. Over the centuries, the different factions have absorbed other noble families. And by absorbed, they, absor they use the traditional method, which is we show up with a bunch of guns and swords and say, hey, pledge allegiance to us, or we'll kill you and take all your stuff. There's nuances to it, you know. I mean, come on, <laughs> Game of Thrones is how long? 900 pages? But that's pretty much the whole thing. So there are several minor houses that have sworn. And if any of you read the... Uh, any big lore fans here? Theta, you like reading the lore, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're familiar with the Avertopois incredibly Byzantine lore of who's actually in charge of who, right? Is, um, is Jacoba one of the Cheetah houses? No, no. Uh, no. He was mentioning major houses, I was just Throwing my own in there. Uh, Jacoba is a is a house of Gravoya, which is a nation that isn't on any map. It's some foreign place, apparently. Uh, and the Jacobins uh, are apparently important in Gravoya, but uh, they um, uh, and I guess you'd call them a great house because they're not technically subservient, but they're also like very far away. Uh, Amelson Jacoba is a foreign noble who married the previous Don Rinaldi. And um, they separated, like as in, I think uh, Don Rinaldi's head was separated from his body, but um, so uh, her status is tr regicide, 
But her son is still, you know, right up there for lead the country. Uh, well, because he's next in line. Right. Well, we're going to fix that because Nick is like here to say, hey, I don't see why you need a syphilitic invalid to rule the country. Hey, I mean, he could be a Jacobin and not a Renovi. Um, well, he's got, right, you know, um... his, his, his claim to the throne is, well, if, yeah, the way history works is, the way your claim to the throne is you say, I'm king, and then find everyone who agrees with you. So, <laughs> uh, it's pretty yeah, much how it works. It's, uh... <laughs> it's what? I just can't wait to be king.